Hello everyone and welcome back to this next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to talk about renewable energy sources. So renewable energy sources such as solar panels, which are also called photovoltaic panels, and wind turbine generators also called WTGs, are now very well known. If you walk anywhere in any city, you will see solar panels on the roofs of houses and buildings. Right? It's a very normal scene nowadays. If you drive or take a train ride out of any city, you'll see huge wind farms with a lot of wind turbines, 20, 30 wind turbines. So therefore, these are now very, very commonplace technology. That is, we are now producing a significant amount of power from renewable energy sources. Countries are now racing with each other to actually take the lead as to who will produce the most amount of energy from renewable energy sources. So this almost become like the next Olympics. Not just how many gold medals are you going to win, but who is going to produce the maximum amount of solar power or wind turbine energy, whatever. Right? This has become the new race. Now, this is all great news for engineering, for manufacturers, for installers. But the main thing is, in terms of design engineers, as an engineer who wants to learn about it, is there any real design and research challenge that still remains? That's the question we need to ask. Because it's important that as you are entering this domain, you would like challenging roles and not just simple manufacturing roles. So therefore, this is the question. Are there still challenges in renewable energy integration? And the answer to this question is very much so. So let's talk about some of those. So in very simple terms, any renewable energy source, whether it's a solar panel or a wind turbine generator, needs a power converter. And this power converter does two things. It ensures that we always extract the maximum available power from these sources. So we are making the best use out of renewable energy. That's important, right? The power converter also has another task. That is, it conditions the power, that is, it's feeding to the grid. Because remember, it is important that we maintain power quality standards, right? We cannot pollute the grid. So, before, that is all that these converters needed to do. That is, they need to extract maximum power and they need to feed it to the grid while conditioning it for adequate power quality. That's it. But, things are changing now. The reason is that the percentage of power that is produced from renewable energy sources has significantly increased. Before it was like a few percent, two percent, three percent. Now we are talking about 30 percent of power produced from renewable energy sources. We are talking about 50 percent of power. Now, in that case, these renewable energy sources are no longer little innocent power producing devices that can just feed any power to the grid. Right? Just like a human being, as he grows older, will have to take on more responsibilities. In exactly the same way, renewable energies are no longer children anymore. They have now grown, which means they are now expected to support the system. What does that mean? It means that you can't just be a passive producer of electricity. You have to ensure that the grid is stable. You have to make sure that the voltage is stable you have to make sure that the frequency is stable, right? So for example, grid question, grid operators are asking this question. If we have a wind farm and these wind turbines conveniently supply the maximum available power that they can produce in the middle of the night and during this middle of the night, demand is low because everyone is asleep. What are we supposed to do with all this power? This is what grid, grid operators are asking and that's a good question, right? You cannot produce a lot of power when there is no demand. That just makes no sense. And here also comes the question of smart grids. As we spoke in the previous lecture, this is where smart grid comes in. You know different parts of the system, what they are doing. And you can control and regulate the power that is being produced. Right? So the question is, these wind turbines, they can produce their power, but they have to ensure that they don't cause the voltage to go out of bounds that they don't cause the frequency to go out of bounds. And moreover, if it is possible to store the power, they have to comply with whatever power flow requirements come up in this process of storage. So this is where a smart grid comes in. 
So the question here again, and these are all the new questions that are being asked when we talk about renewable energy sources. So for example, can we design storage systems that can be coordinated with renewable energy plants? That is, if you're putting a solar panel, can you also install a certain amount of storage such that you can always store that energy if you don't need it? Right? So therefore, it's not that as if you're just pumping all of it into the grid, whether they need it or not. You are storing it in case the grid doesn't need it. Also, can we design special loads that can be coupled to the renewable energy sources? So for example, can we have solar home lighting system? So we have a solar panel which is connected to a single incandescent lamp and maybe an electric fan. Right? This is called a solar home lighting system which is very popular in several parts of the world and can also serve as emergency lighting. Also, we have car, car roof mounted PV panels. So instead of just having an electric vehicle which is plugged into a charger, why not install a renewable a PV panel on the top of a car such that it can charge any time it is being parked? Right? Wouldn't that be good? Maybe it's not enough to charge the car always, but maybe it can increase the, the range of the electric vehicle it can make it more convenient to charge an electric vehicle. For example, if you're parking your car during the day, when you go to the office, wouldn't it be convenient if the car charges automatically? So, the next question is, can bulk consumers like factories, right? Like I said, cement factories, car made manufacturing factories, these are bulk consumers. They, they consume huge amounts of power. Can they use renewables to reduce the burden of the power system? Wouldn't that be convenient because at least then you're producing some of the power on your own. The other question is, in that case, let's say for example, we are talking about a smart grid. Is it possible that can we can form power islands? So for example, let's say it is important that we separate a part of the system. Can that part of the system be operational on its own? Even if the grid collapses, let's say the grid collapses. Example is what happened in some parts of the world when there was a blackout. In that case, can we have little grid islands where renewables supply the power and people can still have power for their basic needs, for cooking, for even for basic things such as lighting. You need to know where you're going. You need to be able to live. So therefore, these microgrids powered by renewables can be the solution for disaster management. So, once we step away from this conventional perspective of a renewable connected to a grid, which is simply supplying all the power it gets into the grid, we see that there are limitless possibilities in how we can design these renewable energy systems. And this is the next challenge with respect to renewable energy sources. So therefore, the question is, or rather the answer to the question is, yes, there are huge challenges in renewable energy source management. I would say not just integration because we are not talking just about integration to the grid. We are also thinking about just how we can use renewable energy sources and the possibilities are limitless. There is a huge, huge amount of possibility in this case. So quite obviously the story has not ended yet. There are immense design and control challenges which are up and coming. The way we look at systems has changed. In quite, in most cases, like I said already, appliances have changed. Our requirements have changed. So therefore, all these things will need power electronic solutions. Always. Because remember, the core component of renewable usage is the power converter. This power converter is the heart and brain of the entire renewable energy system. So therefore, it is quite obvious that there's a lot still to do. The good news is jobs in the renewable energy sub sector are surpassed, are projected to surpass those in the fossil fuel sector, right? Very soon, renewable energy providers will be employing more people than the usual fuel companies. That's what is going to happen very soon. And most importantly, there are numerous research centers in renewable energy all over the world, which are researching every aspect of renewable energy. They are researching the renewable technology itself. They are producing better panels. They are producing foldable plan panels, right? And they are also researching how these renewable energy sources can be used. So therefore, 
not only are there jobs there are high end research jobs as well so therefore by all means renewable energy is only going to grow in the decades to come by no means has this story ended so with this like with this i'm going to end this lecture again if you have any doubts please do let me know otherwise i will see you in the next lecture thank you so much and see you soon goodbye for now